Well, thank you very much. Um, it is quite an honour and a privilege to be able to speak to you uh, just before lunch. Uh, and I will try and use as little as the, uh, of the four minutes of my 10 that are remaining to uh, give you the two things that I've been asked to talk about. So that's uh, around RE in schools during COVID and also to highlight an IFN uh, resource that will soon be available. So the first thing to say is that um, the IFN, which NASACRA, that I am a member of, the National Association of SACRAs, the Welsh version, WASACRA, and the RE Council for England and Wales are long-standing members of the IFN. And there's a real commitment to good quality, multi-faith RE from all of those organisations and to young people learning and developing skills about which enable um, interfaith engagement. Of course, we, we are all here today on an anniversary, but it was on the, on the Friday evening, the 20th of March, that there was an instruction to close all schools. Um, and yet all schools remained open for vulnerable and key worker children. The reality of that was that the secondary schools saw very, very few pupils. Primary provision did have more key worker and vulnerable children, but they were still in that first lockdown, relatively small numbers. And it was, a very sudden move, and I think many schools anticipated quite a short closure. Was she supposed to be on there? There were uh, problems with access um, for both staff and pupils in terms of hardware and software, uh, internet availability. Mm -hmm. And another problem was that there was varying parental support for the home learning mm -hmm. that was supposed to be going on. Uh, so what schools did is they provided a whole variety of things depending on a, a, a huge number of factors. So at one end, that might have simply been task lists. Here is your RE learning to do over the next week or two weeks or so on. Some schools had sort of learning packs that were delivered physically uh, or picked up from the school. Some schools provided recorded lessons delivered over the internet. Others live synchronous lessons. And I think the provision of that developed over that term, uh, that summer term, where there was a lockdown. Now, there was a report done uh, towards the end of that period uh, by the NFER, and they highlighted that, they identified that 80% of schools uh, had some or more subjects that were, in their words, gaining less attention. And RE was one of those uh, most commonly mentioned subjects, along with perhaps unsurprisingly, music and science and PE, which often require specialist resources or specialist delivery. But more surprisingly, English and literacy was also uh, often mentioned as getting less attention. And I suppose that's possibly to do with the amount of curriculum time that might get, particularly on, an, uh, on a primary curriculum. Uh, we move on to September and there was a return to school. There was a learning deficit identified and there was a catch-up curriculum. Some subjects, again, were prioritised in that. The DfE did stress that RE must be part of that broad and balanced curriculum offer. But being honest, I'm not sure if all schools uh, fully took on board that advice. Other advice was that desks need to face the front and that no one should be walking around the room, the windows should be open for ventilation, and pupils were placed in bubbles. And in a primary school, a small class bubble is one thing, but in a massive sixth form or a massive high school where a bubble is a whole year group, that was another matter. And what tended to happen is that as one person uh, was identified as, as being in contact with the virus, uh, large numbers of pupils were in and out and that made curricular uh, progression quite difficult. We move on to January. Schools, once again, uh, without very much warning, uh, closed again. Uh, but this time there was a broader understanding of what key worker children was. So the typical um, picture in a primary school might well be that the teacher would half of, have half of their class in um, who were identified as key worker or vulnerable children, and they would be delivering a lesson to them while simultaneously trying to stream it to the home learners. And I've got to hold my hands up, and I think they did an amazing job. Secondary, it was much more simple. They only typically had perhaps 10% of a cohort 
in school, they were usually placed in an IT room and they accessed the same remote learning as the home learners. Um, some schools kept the usual timetable, some reduced the length, some uh, reduced the breadth of the curriculum. One school that I know of uh, delivered, uh, a high school delivered core English and maths lessons live. The RE department simply were asked to give a list of tasks for Keith Age 3 to produce, uh, to, to complete. And the pedagogical thing was much more delivery of, of knowledge, much more of, of doing what I'm doing, was simply talking to a screen. Uh, rather than that more engaging uh, uh, sort of RE that many pupils would be used to. Uh, currently, pupils are back in classes. There's a var wide vari variation on uh, how that is being done, how COVID safeness is being managed. Um, if I had more time, I'd go into more detail. Uh, and one thing that is worrying certainly high school teachers is there is, is still an, um, an amount of confusion how they are due to arrive at grades for pupils in lieu of external examinations this summer. They're aware that there have been holes in curriculum coverage, and yet there's really been minimal catch-up curriculum for RE. Now onto the second thing, um, because as you, I'm sure many of you are aware that uh, the IFN has a history of producing materials that help uh, the teacher of RE. Some of you might remember the Connect a Youth Interfaith Action Guide uh, and uh, a couple of years ago in 2019 the IFM produced an online resource called Learning About Interfaith Activity which was a primary school resource for pupils aged 9 to 11 and that was really very well received and, and lots of schools have gone on to use that and develop that for their own curriculum and so um, what has happened now is the IFN have gone on and delivered a, uh, produced a similar resource for secondary schools. Um, this is due to be published next week, so today's a little bit of a pre-launch, a bit of a taster, um, and I think we need to give some uh, due thanks to David Hampshire, Dr David Hampshire, who's, who's largely pulled this together. Uh, the resource has five units. The first one is an introduction to interfaith activity in the UK. Second one around interfaith dialogue. One module around um, the ways that interfaith groups uh, show uh, solidarity and service, faith groups and interfaith groups, um, the way that those groups uh, respond to crises, which is uh, particularly apt uh, after having heard some of the presentations this morning. Uh, and the fifth one, the way that those faith and interfaith groups um, respond to uh, climate change in particular. Um, now, the way that was together, member bodies were invited to produce, uh, provide examples that could be used in the resource. A number of, of, of those sorts of projects are in uh, the pack. Uh, trustees, faith communities, forums, lots of people had the opportunity to see the material. Uh, it was then finalised. Um, uh, there were contacts uh, who were asked to review the resource. Um, uh, yes, including those in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. Um, there's been a, a pilot group of secondary schools who's been shown the resource and asked to comment and, and, and their feedback has been very valuable. Uh, that's from a, a wide range, really diverse, urban, rural, maintained academies, uh, non-denominational schools and schools with a religious character, particularly Anglican and Roman Catholic schools. Um, obviously, we're aware that the curriculum offer for RE is different in uh, the uh, uh, devolved nations. Um, so we're, we're very thankful for the input, particularly from Wasakra for Wales. Uh, but we, there are um, examples, although it's based um, on the English curriculum minute, offer, four. there are examples from Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. Um, what I would like to say uh, to people here is that there's real opportunity for um, local interfaith groups to engage with schools, secondary schools, through this resource um, and through their local SACRAs to help implement this resource in schools across the country. One of the big highlights um, or potential ways of doing that is through Interfaith Week, which is mentioned in the resource uh, and could, would be, you know, it would be great to see more uh, connection between uh, Interfaith Week, uh, interfaith groups, and local high schools.